Well, I'd like to introduce uh, the chair of our uh, technology pitch session, Xavier Barter. Uh, Xavier is the general manager at Prime Inc. Uh, he leads Prime to promote and develop innovation in the Paris region with American partners. He is a serial entrepreneur, uh, has uh, created several startups, and he's a graduate from uh, NSAM. Welcome, Xavier. NSAM, yes, thank you. Good evening, uh, or good afternoon, uh, everybody. Um, I'm a general manager of Prime, and uh, so Prime, the first letter in Prime means Paris. And uh, uh, I heard some people talking before about uh, how important it's uh, to have an international connection uh, for innovation. This is exactly what we do. Uh, we, uh, we represent the Paris region technology. We are in San Francisco and uh, we are in Boston. And uh, basically we are doing two things. One is uh, to uh, foster innovation between uh, uh, two ecosystems, mm -hmm. the Silicon Valley Boston uh, ecosystem and the Paris region to form partnership with a research center in, in the Paris region. So if you are interested in connecting with uh, some uh, research centers, some of them are in the room. And the second thing is uh, we are helping French companies to, uh, to come in, in, uh, in the U.S. to uh, uh, establish a present and start, uh, start their operation. So uh, talking about innovation, I, I strongly believe that uh, everything is very interesting, very cool in, in the lab, but... Uh, if you want to have real adoption, uh, you need to have company. And a uh, very important part of, uh, of, uh, of innovation and the, the capacity of making things happening in real life pass through uh, startups. So this is uh, what it is about. Uh, you are going to see a certain presentation. And uh, I will be the master of the clock, so don't worry, you won't be... Uh, killed by uh, PowerPoint. Uh, the format will be uh, uh, one uh, slide per company. Uh, they will have uh, three minutes to present what they are doing. And uh, uh, if you have any question, uh, they will be outside. They will do a demonstration. They will be happy to answer to any question uh, you may have. And uh, I would like, uh, for them, it's uh, an opportunity to present you what, what they are doing. And also, uh, I think it's an opportunity to, for us to encourage themselves. Uh, what's interesting is uh, you have uh, uh, American companies, you have French companies, so startup, and you have also some of the labs uh, that is part of the French labs that are part of, uh, of the organization. So... Uh, do we have a slide? Okay. Uh, the first company I have is uh, AQACOM with Clay uh, Collier. Thank you very much. Um, okay, so we're fortunate in California to be in an environment to deploy some types of technologies. We have a couple of advantages. One is we have a very dense population, 23 million people. You heard our friends from Fresno explain we're one of the largest agricultural districts in the world, and agriculture is a massive water user, which is a massive electricity user. And we have an environment of research that, if, that addresses the fact that we have this dense population with very high heat. So we've had demand response because we have Death Valley with 134 degree summers and the Los Angeles Basin full of people. One of the other advantages we have is the visionary research capabilities of, in this case, Berkeley. There's a gentleman named Art Rosenfeld, who is a research physicist from Berkeley, won the Nobel Prize of the Louis Alvarez Group, and he retired from that to focus on energy, and he's focused on demand response, uh, energy efficiency, etc. He invented the high-frequency ballast for CFLs, he created Title 20 and Title 24, and his vision for automated demand response enabled us to invent OpenADR, the demand response automation server, and the end-to-end -end technologies to fully automate AutoDR. So in one minute, and then I want to introduce someone for, for one minute to talk about our products, 
Um, what we invented was a demand response automation server that allows utilities to talk directly to commercial industrial buildings to shed load to optimize the grid. It's used for peak shaving, it's used for retail industry remediation, wholesale market participation, and most importantly, it's used to integrate renewables. Because when you bring on photovoltaics and wind, you're actually creating more instability in the grid. So it's a, it's a key tool for it. We're happy to talk to you about it out there. Paul, do you want to spend one minute and talk a little bit about what Honeywell has done? Sure. Thanks, Clay. So I am Paul Karp uh, with Honeywell. And Akuacom is a Honeywell company, and Clay talked about sort of the backbone architecture, which is the automated demand response uh, server that, that Clay and Akuacom developed. So Honeywell is a Fortune 100 company that uh, is pretty well diversified, and we are in the automation and control uh, solutions group when we uh, manufacture energy efficiency products and uh, develop services for uh, approximately 60 utilities across the, across the world. And these are in the fields of energy efficiency, demand response, and smart grid services. So um, if you have any questions, please feel free to, to visit us outside, and we look forward to, uh, to talking to you. So thank you. Very good. Thank you. So the next company is uh, Artelis with uh, Laurent Fournier. Thank you. So I, I will make it short as I already presented the, the research project. So I will focus on the technology. So Artelis Crystal City is a decision support tool to help local authority to, to optimize their investment. So uh, the, the, the process is quite simple. You model the whole energy chain. You build, you use uh, local data and uh, uh, open data to build uh, uh, to build the ter territory energy data database, and then you can run what if scenario. So uh, the, the goal is to assess what would be uh, the impact on the energy bill if uh, the gas price uh, increase. What would be uh, the return on investment of a given a given energy uh, action like? Uh, uh, PV integration or electric coal vehicle uh, uh, integration. And uh, so to answer this question, we have a detailed simulation on, of the energy chain. We assess what would be the CO2 emission, what would be the impacts in terms of, uh, of um, uh, energy bill. So we, uh, I already presented the main uh, stakes and the main benefits for, for uh, local authorities and uh, private uh, Partners, so we um, we already uh, uh, presented what we've done with uh, with uh, Bologna and uh, Cesena in uh, Italy. We uh, we also work with uh, Marne Valley near Paris to assess what would be the impact of uh, urban planning uh, programs. So uh, depending on on uh, this uh, urban planning, we assess what would, what are the impacts in terms of. Uh, Consumption and uh, what has the impact of the density, and we are also uh, we have also set up a project with the Parisian uh, Energy uh, uh, Climate Agency on, uh, to to set up a prospective model of uh, of Paris. So I uh, I have a prototype and a demo of the tool. So if you want to to see or if you have some question on, on the model, please come. Thank you. Thank you, Laurent. Very good. We are on time. Uh, so the next company is uh, AutoGrid with uh, Chris Knussen. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. AutoGrid focuses on creating actionable intelligence from the vast amounts of data that we're collecting in the uh, in energy industry today and, and as it's growing over time. In order to do that, we've created an energy data platform. That platform has three major components. It's a massively scalable cloud-based architecture. It integrates sophisticated analytics, optimization, and, ma and machine learning to be able to process that data on an individual resource basis at real time. 
and it provides an interface that is scalable across many standards such as OpenADR, SCP-2, SCP-1, <coughs> SB, as well as many proprietary interfaces to provide a unified view of those resources into some of the solutions we build. Our first product is a turnkey demand response system. It's deployable in a matter of weeks. It has sophisticated uh, email notification system in it. It can manage the responses across that unified set of resources and then scale over time to add flexibility. We've currently deployed uh, the two that we've announced are the city of Palo Alto and SMUD, and we have many other um, utility partners that we're in trial with. We also work closely with industry partners. Our system can be uh, purchased and used on a turnkey basis. It can also be broken down into components such as an individual forecast engine or an open ADR server or an SEP server and then those can be white labeled and integrated into partner portals and programs. Uh, so we'll integrate with uh, numerous smart grid vendors uh, or system integrators which may use the entire system. And then we, we uh, our targeted customers are typically aggregators or utilities and munis as well as uh, uh, integrators in, in the industry. Thank you. Great. The next company is uh, Cloud Beam with uh, Tristan de Fondville. Merci. Bonjour. My company is Cloud Beam. That stands for Cloud Building Energy Asset Management. We say asset management because we will soon be coming out with an irrigation controller to do water, but we started with electricity and water, uh, excuse me, and uh, HVAC systems. So what you're looking at is uh, two devices, the smart plug and the dimmable lighting controller, which is also a hot water heater controller. So that dims devices. And everything that we have, we are a platform, a device management platform. So as Jean-Louis Misica said this morning, he said, we want the city to be a platform. We have a device management platform. And the devices have a Wi-Fi chip, low power gain span Wi-Fi chip. They have our firmware on it. Every five seconds, they deliver a heartbeat up to our cloud server. So all somebody has to do is put one of those devices onto their Wi-Fi network, and it instantly starts heart beating its status every five seconds to our server. And we can send controls down back to the device. So we get sub-metering. There's a sub-metering chip in every device. We get sub-metering and control and monitoring. Then at the cloud level, we can mash it up with we have a REST API. So we have front ends, so the iPad and the phone, I can control these devices from the phone. We have a web portal interface or a web app. These devices can be controlled. So from end to end, you have a building management system that's in the cloud supported by Wi-Fi devices. Every one of these devices ships demand response ready. We are smart grid ready, but not smart grid waiting. So demand response means that they take a break from heart beating and once a minute, they log in by SSL to an open ADR server, get pricing events, and then respond by policy in the chip that the user can send down and say, this is how I want to respond to a moderate or high event. Or the utility program can say, hey, we'd like to lock down that user interface. So when they choose the utility program, it can be that the utility says, no, we'll, as part of the program, have a fixed offset of the devices, whether they dim or the HVAC system goes four degrees or eight degrees offset. So demand response ready and a cloud-based building management system and incredibly low cost. There is no server or gateway to roll in, no Zigbee gateway. You, you can purchase one device. You can get a thermostat at Home Depot. You can purchase one device. And for cities, the most important message is that a big part of cities, as they determine their projects, they have to look at big systems from Johnson Controls, Schneider, Siemens, Alstom. And they have to make difficult decisions about which systems to use. And we play very nice with those systems. We can be integrated with our REST API at the cloud level. But <laughs> we uh, also, I want to really poli. We also, uh, but we also allow cities to make a choice, a very low cost choice to test and roll out these devices to make smart choices right now, low cost. Thank you very much, Tristan. 
I hope you are still okay. So it's, uh, that was our fourth company. So uh, next one is uh, Conjera with uh, Jesse Yu. Hi, thanks for having me. My name is Jesse. I'm from Cogenera Solar. Um, Cogenera Solar provides a solar cogeneration system that produces uh, electricity, heating, and cooling at 75% efficiency to commercial customers with five-year payback or less. Um, the first question you might have is, you know, what is solar, solar cogeneration? Who do we serve, and you know, why does this make economic sense? So, there's lots of sunshine hitting any hitting the buildings out there. And there's generally two things we can do with the sun. We can either make electricity or we can make heat. Now, if you just want to make electricity, you can do, you can do PV. The issue with PV is that it's low efficiency. Um, you start with a 19% efficient cell, and after some losses in cable and inverter and soiling, et cetera, you'd be pretty lucky if you're getting 15% efficiency from a PV panel at the AC kilowatt hour level. It's very similar to an incandescent light bulb. Now, on the other hand, uh, what's the issue with just making heat? If you just want to make heat, you can do traditional solar hot water. The biggest issue with solar hot water is that heat is low value. In California, most commercial customers are paying about 50 to 90 cents a therm, which is roughly 3 cents a kilowatt hour. So heat is worth about a fourth of electricity. So even though solar hot water is making a lot of heat, um, it's not as valuable. What solar cogeneration does is we marry the two and combine the best of both worlds. So solar cogeneration is high efficiency and high value. And typically that manifests itself in a five year payback or less for customers. Um, your next question might be, okay, so sounds interesting, who needs solar cogeneration? Um, it's anywhere there's people. As anywhere there's people, you need heat and electricity um, to do various things such as shower, wash dishes, do laundry, sometimes even heat up a uh, indoor swimming pool. Um, anywhere there's people, you also need to eat and you need to drink and everything that we eat or drink from uh, vegetable, fruit, uh, dairy, meat, etc., needs lots of heat to either cook, blanch, sterilize, or pasteurize. And so solar cogeneration can provide uh, heat and electricity to all the customers mentioned above, and those would include hotels, apartments, office buildings, um, any type of food and beverage processing facility. So for example, uh, Facebook is using our system for their gym as well as their cafeteria, um, and it can be used for their um, data center for cooling as well. Um, all three branches of the U.S. military is also using our system f mostly for, um, for, for showering and, and, uh, and also electricity at the bases. Um, Intercontinental Hotels is another example. Um, we have a booth outside, and uh, we'd be happy to answer any other questions you might have. Thank you. Thank you, Jesse. Uh, the next company is uh, First Fuel with uh, Ready Grow uh, Prudentia. Thank you. Uh, my name is Rodrigo Prudencio. I'm uh, actually a partner with Nth Power, uh, which is a venture capital firm in San Francisco, but we are the lead investor in this Boston-based company called First Fuel. Uh, what First Fuel is, uh, is a developer of uh, a software platform that we believe delivers the first of its kind scalable um, customer engagement model for commercial energy efficiency uh, or, or energy efficiency in commercial buildings of, of all sorts. Uh, we do not need devices, we do not need connection points, and we do not do on-site audits. Instead, we take one year of meter data, interval meter data, 15-minute, one-hour data, the kind of meter data that's coming off of smart meter uh, installations around the world, uh, combine it with our analytical platform and our building science team to turn around a building audit within a few hours uh, that is as detailed and as accurate as a human audit of a building or as a submetered building. Um, and we've done this side-by-side -side comparison testing with buildings that have uh, uh, had, had both those experiences, and that's been verified not only by uh, independent um, uh, analysts that are hired by utilities, but also by the Fraunhofer Institute, and you can see some of the results from that study uh, on the company's website. Uh, the target customers are utilities who are spending billions of dollars in the U.S. alone to engage their customer base uh, around uh, energy efficiency um, uh, plat or, sorry, energy efficiency programs. Uh, there's been a lot of attention, as you know, in the media about companies like Opower who are focused on the residential market. But I'll tell you, the residential market is 20% of that spend. 
The rest of that market is, being, is, is dollars that is flowing into uh, engaging commercial buildings uh, of different sizes, uh, different kinds of customers. Um, and we believe that that is a fantastic market opportunity for this type uh, of platform. The second place that we're engaging is with uh, energy service companies who have fleets of buildings that they service, but it's very difficult uh, to send in people, contractors on a regular basis to understand what's going on inside of those buildings. We can do that with a no-touch approach. The important thing is for all of these clients, whether they come through a utility, whether they come through an ESCO, whether they come through a real estate uh, platform, um, for the client, for the actual building facility owner, we provide an audit without interruption to their building, without scheduling hassle, and with much more insight and actionable, um, actionable information, not only on no, uh, no uh, change, no retrofit uh, opportunities, what we call sort of the low-touch, no-touch um, uh, energy savings opportunities, as well as pointing the facility to the most cost-effective retrofits. Again, without doing any sort of on-site visit, all we get is the address of a building and the meter data. We believe it's a very scalable, very powerful platform. Uh, we're already doing audits throughout the United States, and we're looking forward to doing more uh, overseas. Thank you very much. Thank you, Rodrigo. The next company is uh, Green Communication with uh, Kaldu Halgaha. Sorry for the... Uh... Thank you very much. So, uh, Green Communication Companies is selling products to provide wireless, uh, wireless network access. Uh, the, so the market behind uh, uh, the wireless access is uh, several billions of, of dollars. However, I mean, the, the, the form of the wireless access that we provide is more mesh and ad hoc. And the existing um, mesh networks today, they suffer from the, the, the quality of service, the missed quality of service, and also they, uh, they, they have problems on divergence, especially when you have big density, for example. So people, they cannot access because they are, the density is, is, is high. So uh, after 10 years of research, uh, Green Communication brings a solution for that. So we provide uh, accurate uh, uh, channel estimation, and then we, we make reservation for clients, and we also redistribute uh, the unused reservation. We, 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 we have also an, uh, uh, another added value is the energy savings. So we, we develop the start and stop uh, function. All the devices that are not useful for the network, they are going to turn off. And in that case, you could save about 30% of the energy. And also, you, you drew, you, you, as a conclusion, you, you reduce also the uh, electromagnetic field pollution. So I learned today, for example, if you go to Venice Beach in Los Angeles, so they, they are going to cover with uh, uh, mesh, uh, mesh network with solar plants. So if you need to see the small so, so solar plants for those access, uh, this mesh network, you need energy saving. And so, as you see, green communication is uh, really connecting people with the values of today, if you want to get those values, so please buy the products of Green Communications. <laughs> Thank you, Kaldun. So the next one is uh, a research institute from uh, 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 France. So it's called IFSTAR with uh, Rashida Shakir. You, you can encourage her more, you know. <laughs> so drinking water purification strategy requires the knowledge of the concentration of chloride in the all water network distribution. So this kind of network are usually very large and very complex, but up to this day, water Quality assessment methods are based on 1D hydraulic model and data provided by a small number of sensors. Those 1D models are well known to provide inaccurate outputs and they are, cannot be reliable for decision making by water network manager. So we have developed a 3D numerical tools that allow us to reconstruct um, data field for a vast water network with a very 
good accuracy. And for example, we can evaluate the chloride concentration anywhere in the water network. This could be very useful, for example, if you want to prevent and control drinking water contamination, or also if you want to detect uh, a leaking pipe. So the main advantage of our, of our approach is that we are able to have a real-time simulation. This is thanks to very advanced um, reduction models tools. So we have successfully used this tool for a small neighborhood in Versailles near Paris. So here we can see an example of the reconstruction of the velocity field in a junction pipe. We are also working on an implementation for the city of Cannes in the French Riviera. And the main goal is to have a final tool that we work on mobile devices and we work also for an, an, an entire city and this in real time. So the main target client will be the district community, and this project is also in collaboration with uh, Swiss Environment <laughs> and Advitam, A3IP, and ESIEE Paris. So if you have any question or if you want to see a small demo, I will be outside uh, with uh, the audience. Thank, thank you. Uh, thank you, Rashida. I think I will remember uh, if you want to do uh, a trial in Cannes and Versailles, you can follow our path. That's pretty cool. Uh, the next company is uh, Maxim Integrated with uh, Dev Undine. Hi, we've learned a lot today about uh, different systems that generate large amounts of data for smart city and smart grid implementations. And at the foundation of each of these systems are critical devices that provide the data for each of these smart cities and smart grids. At Maxim, we are an analog mixed signal semiconductor company providing the core building blocks for smart meters, grid distribution automation infrastructure, and a variety of other smart grid devices. Our core areas of expertise in smart grid applications are accurate measurement, complete security, and robust communications. We're here today to discuss our products. We've got a demonstration out in the reception area, and also to learn more about the applications and trends that you're seeing in your space and how we can add value to your products. Thanks, and I look forward to speaking to you. Very good. Uh, in fact, I think I, I forgot to mention that at the end of the session, I'm going to ask you a question about what they are doing. So <laughs> you have to pay attention and remember, okay? Very important. Uh, the next company is uh, Redwood System. And um, I have two persons on the list. Richard? I guess you are Richard. Right. Hi, thanks. I'm Richard Rake from Redwood Systems. Uh, we do is, really, we've heard a lot about smart cities today. We do smart buildings. We do smart buildings through lighting. So what that means is we deploy a high-density sensor network that really falls on the backs of LED lights into a facility. If you think about LEDs and lighting in general in a building space, we're covering the whole floor plan. What we've done is accompanied a sensor with each LED, and we're powering that LED over low voltage, over Cat5 cable. And you can see our engine up there in the corner. But what this allows us to do through that Cat5 cable, we're powering that fixture, controlling that fixture, but we're also sending communication back from that sensor to the engine about the operating conditions of that, of that facility and tuning the lighting appropriately. So if you look at sort of first case scenario, why do we accompany lighting? It's an easily quantifiable ROI. So that's good. It gets us into the facility. But then there's all sorts of upside to the data. So 
if we look at one of our installations here in Santa Clara at Data Center, 300,000 square foot facility, we took them from an operating wattage per fixture of 88 watts down to 8 watts. Uh, that's just your basic energy savings off the lighting. If you start thinking about all the other data that's generated by our sensors in terms of occupancy, daylight, and temperature, if you look at another one of our customers, SAP, SAP is now using that occupancy data to better inform its HVAC system and integrate that into its set points and what areas should be heated or cooled. The other part of occupancy data, which I think is perhaps most interesting and perhaps doesn't tie into energy savings per se as we know them, but is about the occupancy and the spatialization of a building. So if you take another one of our customers, Facebook, its facility in Menlo Park, it's taken that occupancy data. They didn't put in the lights, they just wanted the sensors, and they've better understood their space configuration. So the first build out at the former Sun Microsystems uh, facility there, they had seven large conference rooms in that first building, and they were, they were looking at that data and saying, there's only two of them being used. So from every building at that point on, they did two large conference rooms, much smaller conference rooms, and then they're using the data in real time to schedule those conference rooms to better use, utilize that space in real time. I have a demo out here. I'd be happy to talk to you about it, and uh, thanks for having me. Thank you. The next company is uh, Silver Spring with uh, Michelle McLean. Having a French mother, it's so lovely when somebody French says my name. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Hope you're doing well. I'm Michelle McLean, Product Marketing at Silver Spring Networks. And what we're all about is building energy networks for today and evolving to the everything networks of tomorrow. People talk about this as the Internet of Things that's coming along. So what we do is build the network and back office systems to right now apply to the energy industry. So enabling utilities to provide two-way communications to devices that generate, distribute, consume, or monitor energy. And we're focused on uh, utilities right now growing to other adjacencies and city networks. We have projects on five continents, and we have connected more than 13 homes and businesses across the globe. A number of our customers are on the East Coast, and several of them called out the value of the smart grid in recovering from Sandy last week. We have a long way to go. There's a lot of education still needed uh, at the commission level, for example, as to the benefits of smart grid. But we were really excited to see several of our customers complimented for the benefit that smart grid had uh, provided in speeding up their outage recovery and their power restoration services. So. I talked a little bit about the fact that we do network and back office systems. So we have an IPv6 based network. Why does that matter? Open standards. We've always believed in the network effect. The more stuff you can have on the network, the more valuable it becomes. So we've taken a partnering approach from the get-go with an open standards approach so that more devices, more software, more back office systems can be integrated with our technology. What are people using it for? So I talked a little bit about outage recovery. This is a really big deal. They, they can know when outages happen, especially if it's something widespread like Sandy, but often they don't know and they're still waiting for customers to call. So pinpointing where and when an outage occurs, and then more importantly, a crew's been to the area, they've done some restoration, but there's a notion of a nested outage. The crew looks around and the lights in their immediate area are back, but there can be another problem farther down the feeder line that they can't observe from there. They roll away and they have to go back time, money, down the tubes. Another big area is improved customer service. When you have a lot of move in, move out, Berkeley is a great environment for this, right? People change over their apartments uh, at the end of term. Uh, utilities need an easy way to uh, know your bill at the time that you call to request your disconnect of service and have an easy way to turn it back on when somebody else comes in there. A lot of utilities opt, when they don't have the technology to do that, they opt not to turn it off. And so there can be this uh, amorphous power that we all end up paying for that isn't technically on the books, but it's getting consumed and somebody's got to cover the cost. Uh, there's also the notion, people have been talking about data. There's a tremendous amount of data getting generated by Smart Grid. 
a lot of it is very useful being dedicated to the customer so that they can understand where and when they're using energy. So we're applying it to energy today, moving into adjacencies like street lights controls in the future, and I'll be outside to answer any additional questions you might have. Thanks. Thank you, Michelle. The next company is uh, Smart Impulse with uh, Charles Gouriot. Hello, I'm Charles Gouriot, co-founder of Smart Impulse. Uh, Smart Impulse has developed the Smart Analyzer. It's a power meter able to identify the power consumption of each type of equipment inside a, bu inside a building for commercial buildings. So we can identify lights, computers, air conditioning, etc. And once we know the consumption of each type of equipment, at what moment they consume, it's pretty straightforward to identify energy and cost savings. So how does it work? We have been working on the technology for four years now, and um, so we, we have seen that, we have measured that when we, you plug an electrical device on the network, it changes the form of the current. So we have built a database of hundreds of different signatures, and we have developed a patented algorithm that does pretty much the same as when you listen to an orchestra, you can recognize the different instruments playing. You can, you can make the difference between um, a clarinet, the piano, or the violin, uh, just as the same as we do the difference between different type of lights, um, air conditioning, or computers. Um, we've also designed the solution to be very uh, simple and non-destructive to set up, it could be installed in any commercial building in around about two hours, and there is no need to turn off the power. Um, so the smart analyzer can be used for one month's diagnosis to get a snapshot of how the building is consuming. But if you're gonna, if you want to go, you know, deeper in understanding on the long term the power consumption of the building, you just leave the smart analyzer on site, so you have a continuous vision of what is consuming in the building. So if you have set up an, an impl uh, improvement plan, you can see action by action the efficiency of each, uh, each action you have implemented on the real consumption, not estimation, real consumption. And you can also see the impact of the season over, over the power consumption. And finally, if there is any uh, consumption drift, you can be alerted immediately. Uh, so far, uh, we have launched the solution in March 2012. So far, there are around 25 buildings where the solution has been implemented. And we would be glad to meet anyone interesting in discussing how we could uh, help solve energy problems on the side of the Atlantic. So please come visit our booth and thanks for your attention. Thank you, Charles. You know, by listening to all of this company, uh, I, I think I already am really impressed. It's and where we are talking about smart cities, smart grid, uh, this is it. The next company is WebShell with uh, Mehdi, and uh, it will be the last. Thank you, thank you, Xavier. Uh, hello, everybody. Um, uh, today we talked a lot about smart cities and uh, uh, energy efficiency, uh, clim climates and uh, uh, pollution. And now I would like to talk about the other part of smart cities that we didn't talk so much, but uh, this is my mission today, uh, about the digital smart cities, numerical, uh, what is uh, smart cities for the web. And, um, and the, the message I wanted to say to cities today that when you launch open data uh, to your ecosystem, and launching open data is not a goal, it's a journey. And uh, you will understand uh, why I say that, because you, you have to talk to the users of open data, which are often developers, and this is, this is not the job of CDs to do that. Um, for understanding, understanding that, uh, you have to understand how today a developer make an application. Uh, today, when a developer wants to make an application, mobile or web application, he has to, to use a lot of data on the web. We call them web services. And today, uh, these web services are Facebook, Twitter, Foursquare, uh, open data of San Francisco, open data of Paris. And all this data, all these web services are very, very different. And developers are, uh, are very, very, um, uh, have very big pain to mix this data together. 
Uh, and, um, and with all these, uh, developers use what we call APIs, Application Programming Interface. And these APIs are um, better than only classical data to do that. And concretely, what WebShell do? Uh, WebShell gather all the APIs of the programmable web into only one language for developers and open data too. Also, the mission we provide today for, uh, co for companies or for uh, cities is to transform their open data into open API. So we help them to leverage a developer community around these, uh, these data. And we, we, uh, we continue to, with them to what we call hackathons. It's uh, application contests. And this is what we do, uh, what we did with the French uh, national uh, open data portal, uh, which is Etalab, uh, called the, uh, with the data connection contest. Uh, we made this with the French national railway company in the summer. And in 48 hours, eight application uh, was built on the WebShell uh, API for their open data. And this weekend, I come back in France, in Marseille, uh, for uh, uh, hackathons with the Marseille open data and the state's bouche du rhone open data. Also, this is the three things that uh, WebShell can, uh, can provide for open data uh, providers, or companies, or cities. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Mehdi. So, uh, if you notice, uh, we, have, uh, we are 20 minutes early on, on the schedule. Uh, startup, they are, they are moving very fast. So I would like to uh, uh, encourage them. So a uh, big round of applause to all of these companies. And uh, remember, they want to meet you, uh, especially if you are a potential customer. So if you are a big utility, uh, or if you are a city, they will be outside, they will show demo, they will answer uh, your questions, so please meet them. Thank you.